Welcome in to Bloomington, Indiana, here inside Simon Scott Assembly Hall, where it's time for a rivalry matchup between the number 12 Indiana Hoosiers and the Purdue Boilermakers. Glad that you could join us tonight. I'm Sam Niederman along with Drew Fry. We'll hear from Haley Jordan in just a moment. This is the 89th meeting all time between these two clubs. Indiana has won four of the last six, while Purdue has not won inside Assembly Hall since 2012. Tonight, it's Indiana's dynamic offense against a hard-nosed Purdue defense. Players to injury and just the depth that Indiana has, Purdue might have to switch it up. Good ball movement. Penn splash for three. Jalen Penn off terrific passing to open up a six-point edge for IU. Tip ball, and Allen comes away with it. Here come the Hoosiers on the run. Wilson bounces. Pat Berg scores. Seven on the shot clock. Berger gets a screen. Turbo to the basket, Euro step on McLaughlin. Oh, everything but the finish, it's stuck on the rim. Hoosier still with it though. Wise, one dribble and a jumper, good. Allen the pull up from the free throw line, off the front, Holmes able to gobble the rebound and get the basket, plus the foul. Mackenzie Holmes wakes up underneath and she's going to line for a three point play potentially. Chanel Wilson wants to run in transition, going against Harden, scoops it up, left hand, good. Chanel Wilson flies in and boosts Indiana's advantage back to 19 late in the third. Both coaches have seen this rivalry from almost every angle. Sharon Versip, a former player for the Boilermakers back in the late 80s under Ruth Jones. She was a senior at Purdue when Terry Morin was playing for the Boilers as a freshman. Indiana's head coach now wears red tonight for the university that's just an hour away from her hometown in Seymour, Indiana. Moore in, in her sixth season in charge of the Hoosiers. A 116 and 68 record. Alexa Golbe ready to jump it up with Ariana Harris at midcourt. Our officials for tonight, Gina Cross, Felissa Grinter, and Bruce Morris. Indiana and Purdue for the 89th time underway here in Bloomington. The Boilers control the opening tip. Kayana Trailer, the 5'9 point guard out of Martinsville just up the road starts with it. Yeah, look for Purdue. They obviously want a hot start. And there's Ariana Harris just missing that, but hot starts have really meant a lot for both teams so far this season and just in Big Ten play in general. Good defense at the rim by Brenna Wise, Indiana's only senior on this roster, able to stop Ariana Harris from getting the first points of this ball game. Here's Allie Patberg. She had 19 points against Illinois on Monday. Grace Berger pulls up. Just off the back iron, Brenna Wise unable to handle the offensive rebound, and then she regathers it out. Hoosiers get to reset for another fresh possession. Yeah, Wise but... wants a three. That's short. Goulbay tips it. The trailer controls for Purdue. Yeah. Indiana really needs to establish themselves early on the boards. We saw Mackenzie Holmes with that early offensive rebound, and Berger tried to get another one there, but that's been one of Purdue's strengths. And if Indiana can take that away from the Boilermakers, then that's a huge blow for Purdue to try and pull off this upset. Purdue started slow on Sunday against Rutgers. They trailed 24 to nine after the first quarter. Only lost that game by six. Harris with a short corner, Jay, and she rattles it down. Ariana Harris checks in for Purdue. Two-time Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, and Sharon Versip knows that if her squad wants to compete tonight, she's going to have to step up offensively as well. Yeah, that's one thing. Well, you know with Ariana Harris that she is going to be there every game defensively. Otherwise, she wouldn't be a back-to-back -back Big Ten um, Defensive Player of the Year. But it's going to come down to the offense, and that's one thing that uh, Rutgers was able to limit a little bit was uh, Harris's offensive efficiency. Boilers at the other end off a turnover. Trailer pulls up. Got the roll at the end of it. Almost was a brick, but it goes down for Kayana Trailer. Purdue's got an early four-zip lead. Boilermakers going with a little bit of a matchup zone here to start, Drew. Yeah, try and capitalize on that strength that they have down low and try and really force Indiana to make some bad shots, turn the ball over, and Indiana not on the board yet, so it's working thus far, although very early into this game. Odin pops it into Harris, pivots off her left foot, fades away against Goulbe. Good defense by the Hoosiers to make the stop. Grace Berger in transition. One-on-one -on -one against Grant, pivots under the basket, couldn't get the layup, a whistle and a foul. Janelle Grant called for the foul, first one of the ball game. Redshirt Jr. out of London, England. 
Berger trying to score underneath the basket. And the Hoosiers tried to go out and transition there. That is an area in which they really excel. They want to get out and run downhill. Yeah, exactly. If they're able to capitalize on the speed that they have and just a lot of movement, that's one thing that this Hoosier team has been so good at is playing as a team, being able to find the open player. And in transition, that's, that's where it's a lot easier to find those players that are open, find those players in the ideal scenario. Berger goes one of two at the line. And Purdue still leads by three. Patberg matches up against Trailer. Here's Dominic Odin. Trailer finds Carissa McLaughlin with seven on the shot clock. Now inside the Harris baseline roll, well defended by Goulbay. Did not touch the rim. One to shoot. Grant's three does not count. Shot clock violation. Indiana holds out strong, and Purdue unable to get anything. Yeah, very strong defense from Indiana all the way around. And something that I've noticed early on is that they've got uh, the Hoosiers have Jalen Penn guarding McLaughlin. And one thing that we've heard and we've seen with this Boilermaker group is that when McLaughlin can get open, even if she just gets a little bit of space, then she can sink a three and make them pay. And Penn has made it very clear she's not going to let McLaughlin have any daylight. Cool, babe, battling inside against Harris, in and out. Ball's loose on the far side. Lose it off last, off of Purdue last. Looked like Grant was on the ground and touched it. Indiana keeps the ball. Indiana does not have that field goal yet. They've come close, but one thing that Indiana has been very strong with all season is getting those points in the paint, and that is the specialty of Purdue, is defending the points in the paint with players like Harris down low and several of their other key contributors. So if Indiana's not able to finally figure this out, then they might be in some trouble if they're forced to shoot the three. Goulbay sets a screen for Penn, who comes up way short on the jumper. Harris gets a rebound for Purdue, and here come the Boilers in transition. Trailer backs it out. Harris waiting for a pass. She finds Cassidy Harden, who's checked in. One bouncer to trailer, seven on the shot clock. Backdoor cut by Harden. Doesn't take the shot. Three to shoot. Might not know it. She forces up a long one. Misses everything and another shot clock violation. That's two very strong defensive stands from Indiana. They're showing why they're known as a top defensive team in the Big Ten. And for them, it's just going to be about starting to get that scoring going. And they've shown they can get hot when they're able to finally find the bottom of the basket. But so far, nothing going. Indiana 0 for their first six from the floor. It's been an ugly one so far here in Bloomington. 4-1 Purdue. Hoosiers still looking for their first made basket. Penn matched up with McLaughlin. Mackenzie Holmes has checked in. Here she is one-on-one -on -one with Harris, and she walked with it. Another turnover for Indiana, and this is going to be something they cannot let themselves keep making these small mistakes and just very simple mistakes, but can have such a big impact down the road as with just one point on the board. And after a little while, that can start to get in their head as we're now almost five minutes in. Trailer with a travel at the other end. Both teams pretty sloppy. Two turnovers for Indiana, and now three turnovers for Purdue. Yeah, sloppiness is definitely a part of it, but we also have been seeing some very strong defense not giving any open lanes. Pepper straight to the hole and the finish. Allie Pepper checks in with the first basket for IU, and that brings them within one. Well, as I spoke, that Patberg had her open lane, so she took it. And that's one thing that Patberg, Patberg has been very good at uh, just this season in general is just finding a spot to go inside and running with it. Trailer shuffles for a jumper, misses in and out. Berger gets the board. Good behind the back dribble to start the move on the run. Patberg whips it wise, drives, bumped in by Harden for a foul.